Uh, I'm Lance Hoffman, Director of GW's Cybersecurity Policy and Research Institute, CSPRI. We are a center for GW and the Washington area that promotes technical research and policy analysis of problems that have a significant computer security and information assurance component. Our mission is to encourage, promote, facilitate, and execute interdisciplinary research in these areas including the exploration of the norms, governance issues, and operating systems of cyberspace. Many of you have been here before, so you, so you know that. For those who haven't, you are welcome to visit uh, www.cspri.gwu.edu for descriptions of the current programs, such as our Scholarship for Service program and the Information Assurance Scholarship program. Many of the people around here are uh, students in these programs uh, studying cybersecurity, or uh, our CyberWatch uh, uh, pr project. It's a network of over 75 academic institutions focusing on developing a, a stronger cybersecurity workforce, or some of our current projects like Sea to Shining Sea, where we take uh, material like this. We are videotaping this, and we're going to distribute it to partners so they can have the benefit of uh, uh, the wisdom that uh, comes out here. Um, this is our second event of this academic year, and if you have ideas and suggestions for future events, please talk to me or my assistant director, Carlos Tregas, uh, and uh, we will uh, take your ideas into consideration. The next event in this series is in uh, the new year, January 25th. Same room, same time, noon. Uh, I can't announce the details yet. I, I have uh, one speaker, but I don't have his opponent yet in a debate. But it's going to be related to this ad some of you may have seen in this morning's New York Times or Washington Post on the SOPA Act, uh, basically related to, uh, in essence, it's a classic content providers versus internet uh, providers uh, debate, okay? But we intend to have that debate here January 25th. Um, okay, so if you are not on our um, newsletter mailing list, uh, you will be, unless you tell us you don't want to be. Um, okay, uh, many of you have signed up for lunch, and even if you haven't, we have some extras here if you, if you want to stay, uh, but don't eat now. We're going to break just before 1 o'clock uh, and retrieve our lunches and immediately sit down to break bread with the uh, debaters and the, uh, the commentators. Uh, now, before I introduce everybody, uh, uh, we traditionally go around and introduce ourselves so they get a sense of who their audience is, and, and, and you don't have to, but if you are willing, I'd like you to give your name and affiliation. Name, job title, if you will, and affiliation. Just that. You don't have to. It can be just, I'm in here interested. But don't give a speech. Uh, you can also pass. Uh, uh, and and then we're going to pass the microphone around so we can catch all these so we can capture these. And oh, by the way, at any time, if you do not want to be videoed, just let any, uh, any of us know, myself or uh, Dr. Tregas uh, or, or Jonathan Bench, uh, and we will uh, cut you out in the post-production, okay? <laughs> so with that, I'm going to introduce the speakers last. So let me pass this around this way and start. Hello, everyone. I'm Summit Sagal, Director of Information Security for George Washington University Hospital. Hi, Nasreen Barbic, uh, George Washington University Hospital, Information Security Analyst. Hi, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm Courtney Kennedy. I'm a research and editorial assistant with the Institute for Communitarian Policy Studies. I work with Professor Edziani. Jason Kerbin, State Department. Regina Elwell, graduate degree student in um, GW's High Technology Crime Investigation Program. Uh, Edward Atkinson Clark, uh, master's student at GW and the American University in Beirut. John Willis, uh, independent privacy and security consultant. Rebecca Hoffer, uh, first year master's student in digital forensics. Maya Larson, master's student in computer security. Uh, Tim Brzezinski, I'm a first year master's student in the CyberCore program here, studying computer science. Nicole Brisa with the Cyber Project at Georgetown University. Hi, uh, Chris Krowick. I'm an undergraduate in the Computer Science Department here in the Cyber Corps program. Stephen Moxley, and I'm a Cyber Corps student as well. David Hong, I'm from the Allied School of International Affairs, studying international security. I'm Bob Gelman, I'm a privacy consultant here in Washington. 
I'm Michael Clarkson. I'm a professor in the computer science department here at GW. Uh, Carl Landwehr. I'm an independent consultant. Oh, uh, Paul. Okay. Okay. That's just he, he just escaped. <laughs> you, you escaped. Okay. And one more. We just got done in real ball. Costis, you should. Uh, you should uh, I'm Costis Turing as the assistant director of CSPRI. And back back here is Jonathan Bench, uh, the administrative assistant for CSPRI. And uh, she's not going to get away. Sitting over there on the end is Professor Diana Burley in the Graduate School of Education and Human Development. I'll do it for you rather than doing it by like, uh, it back. And one final person. Uh, Mark McCarthy with Georgetown University and with the Software and Information Industry Association. Okay, thank you all. So now you know your uh, audience. Uh, the proposition today is resolved. Cell phone and internet blackouts by government agencies are unconstitutional and illegal absent a declared national emergency. And for the proposition, we have uh, arguing Greg Nogine, who's a senior counsel at the Center for Democracy and Technology and the director of its project on freedom, security, and technology. The CDT is a Washington-based nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting democratic values and constitutional liberties in the digital age. In this capacity, Greg conducts much of CDT's work in the areas of national security, terrorism, and Fourth Amendment protections. He also sits uh, with me on the Data Privacy and Integrity Advisory Committee to the Department of Homeland Security. Now against the proposition is Paul Rosenzweig. Uh, Paul is the founder of Red Branch Law and Consulting. Uh, he is formerly was Deputy Assistant Secretary for Policy in DHS, and he served twice as Acting Assistant Secretary for International Affairs. In these positions, uh, he had responsibility for developing policy, strategic plans, and international approaches to the entire gamut of homeland security activities, ranging from immigration and border security to avian flu and international data protection rules. He's an adjunct faculty member in the GW Law School. Uh, and you're teaching or your new book out, don't you? Uh, the book is not out yet. Uh, the book's not out yet. It'll, I, I don't deliver the manuscript. It's called Cyber War, How Cyber Conflict, uh, I think, Challenges America and Changes the World, or Changes America and Challenges the World. <laughs> it's coming out from Prager. I have to deliver the manuscript in the spring, so it should be out next fall. And uh, I should say, since I am teaching, and they might want to take it, I teach a <laughs> cybersecurity law and policy class uh, in the spring. Thursdays, 3.50 to 5.50 over at the law school. Um, you're more than, I, I know at least one student in the room has actually registered already. Um, but you're more than welcome to join me. It's, it's, it's more policy than law, so don't be afraid. <laughs> and, and so for the cyber core students, it, it certainly does count as long as you can make your way from that, you know, that tight thing. That I know cyber core students have a 1 to 3.30, is it, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So if you can dash from Mount Vernon campus, um, That's hard. Well, they have a waiting taxi, you know, or whatever, or, or a, a jet boost, something. Anyway, uh, okay. And I'm going to introduce the, uh, well, let me introduce the commentators also. I'm not going to be, uh, uh, not, not introduce them now. But we're going to have commentary after the debate uh, by uh, two commentators. First is uh, Dr. Amitai Etzioni, who's a GW University professor and professor, professor of international affairs. He's also the director of the Institute for Communitarian Policy Studies. His expertise is in sociological analysis of international relations, civil society, and transnational norms and institutions. And he has written on uh, security, privacy, lots of things. I, I read him at time, like 30 years ago I was reading his stuff. It's good then, it's good now. Um, Dr. Eric Berger is on the faculty of Georgetown University and is a consultant to the internet, telecommunications, legal, and financial services industries. His current research areas include real-time interactive multimedia protocols, carrier-friendly peer-to-peer networking, sensor networks, and edge computing. Now, the way this is going to work, uh, I didn't tell you, but I'll tell you now, we're going to take an anonymous vote first, okay? Um, so we want you to uh, vote on the proposition. What we want to do is see how, if any minds are changed before and after. So remember, the proposition again is resolved. 
cell phone and internet blackouts by government agencies are unconstitutional and illegal, absent a declared national emergency. What is your feeling right now? Is that, do you agree with that? If you agree with that, say yes. If you do not agree with that, say no. Write it down. Fold it over. Fold over your, your thing so it's anonymous. We'll collect these things. We'll do a similar vote actually twice later in the uh, in this, uh, couple hours and see how minds are changed.